Hi and welcome to a gentle introduction to Twine. This video will explain what Twine is, some general terms it uses, and what its greatest strengths are as a tool for creating projects. So what is Twine? Let's start with a definition. Twine describes itself as an open source tool for telling interactive, nonlinear stories. What do all those words mean? Let's break down each term in the phrase to get to know Twine better. Starting with the first, open source. So what does open source mean as it applies to Twine? Twine's code, called its source, is available for all to see, suggest potential features for, or contribute bug fixes. Every version of Twine has been completely open, and everyone can see what the code is and how it works. This also means Twine is not directly supported by a company or other commercial operation. There is one primary maintainer, Chris Klimas, and several other developers who contribute time and fixes for problems people identify. Everyone who works on Twine is a volunteer. Financial support for Twine takes place primarily through Patreon, but there is no cost to use Twine or to create with it. Interactive. Players can interact with progression or see certain content. The term player can be useful when discussing how people interact with works made with Twine, but it's not the only one people can use. Many projects created with Twine tend to be games, but not everything created with Twine need to be a game or even game-like in its presentation. Some people create personal essays or other types of works where the term game does not quite work as best to describe them. Nonlinear. When reading a physical book, we often move from page to page, starting from the beginning and stopping when we reach the end. Stories created digitally are not bound to these same rules. They can be nonlinear, which means its parts can be accessed in different orders or sometimes not at all. Nonlinear stories are often those whose experience can be expressed as loops or branching patterns, where choice made by a player might mean they only see some part of a much larger work in any one session. So what is Twine? It is all these three things. It is open source, everyone can see what the code is. It's interactive, players click on links or press buttons to progress the story. And it also produces nonlinear works, where parts of the story can be experienced in different orders, or sometimes not at all, depending on player actions. So let's talk about some different terms that Twine uses. The first is story. When you start a new project in Twine, it starts with a question, what should your story be named? Generally, we use the term stories to describe, to describe things we create with Twine. We're creating stories with Twine. Stories are created based on another term, passages. The smallest unit in a story is a passage. Most stories in Twine use many connected passages. Why is this a useful term? Well, in a physical book, useful ways to think about its different parts might be chapters, pages, or even paragraphs. In a digital and often nonlinear context, these terms are not as useful. What exactly is a page to a computer? What is a chapter? Instead, Twine uses this different term, passages. This describes the smallest unit in a larger digital story. So we have stories composed of passages. Finally, we have one last term, story format. This is a combination of visual layout and advanced functionality. Each story format in Twine presents a different approach to creating with Twine. Generally, though, when people start up Twine, they use its default story format, which is named Harlow, which has many useful tools and functionalities for people first creating with Twine, such as a toolbar and helps with a lower technical knowledge and approach to creating with the tool. So we have stories. Stories are composed of passages, and we use story formats to create those stories composed of those passages. So we understand Twine as an open source tool, that is the code's available to everyone. We also understand it creates interactive works, players click on things or press buttons to progress its story content. And we also understand it produces nonlinear works. Works where what we now understand as passages can be visited in different orders or revisited in any way and produce a different order each session or each time we sit down and play with it. So finally, what is Twine best at? It's best at text-based projects, it's best at nonlinear storytelling, and it's best at limited to new multimedia such as images, audio, or video. The homepage for Twine mentions it publishes directly to HTML so you can post your work nearly anywhere. This is important. As Twine inherits the same issues HTML does when it comes to different works we create with it. 
HTML is an acronym for the more technical terms of Hypertext Markup Language, HTML. This is the language of the internet, and nearly every website uses it to some form or another. HTML allows works to use hyperlinks, an ability to move from one document to another, sometimes one website to another, through clicking on a link in one and then moving to the other. Because Twine is based on HTML, it is best at text-based stories because HTML is also best at that. You can use some multimedia in Twine with some work and a little patience, but it's not generally designed for such things as images, audio, and video. It cannot also easily do advanced things like multiplayer or three-dimensional graphics or other things like that. Twine's not really designed for that. It's designed for generally text-based nonlinear storytelling. And there are far better tools for things like that that are not based on HTML. So what's Twine? An open source tool to create interactive, nonlinear stories. What are stories in Twine? Stories are composed of passages, the smallest unit in a story. And we also use story formats to create those stories composed of those passages. Finally, Twine is best at text-based projects, nonlinear storytelling, and little to no multimedia such as images, audio, or video.